continuing, um, I didn't write it down right here, but section what? 2.6 to 2.8. This is review for the test. <clears throat> and it's that worksheet, okay? 2.6 to 2.8. And we're going to do selected problems now instead of every single one of them. So let's do number 10. And let's write this thing down. So it's the square root of 2x plus 3. And then minus the square root of x plus 1 equals 1. Now, we're not going to work it the way it's written right here. What we're going to do is we're going to change it around a little bit just to make things a little easier for us. If you notice, we got two things with square roots, don't we? Now, technically, I could square the whole entire left side and square the whole entire right side the way it's written right now. You could do that, but that's going to make life way, way more difficult for you, right? I could square this. Now, don't write this down. But I could take this and square it. But what am I going to have to do if I square this? What method am I going to have to use here foil. if I square this? i got to use FOIL method or distributive property, and right? that's going to make it really ugly. And that's going to make it super ugly, okay? Now, it can be done. You can do it that way. And then you'd have to square that. You could but do it that way. Make it it's going to make it ugly, 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 and you don't want to do that. So let's make do this. Right now, you're still going to have to FOIL something, but the FOIL this way is going to be a little easier than what the FOIL would have been right here, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing right here and we're going to chuck it to the other side. So this will stay right here. Now why did I move this one over to the right, not this one? Well, because this had a minus and it just it makes it a plus. It just makes it a little easier. If I wanted to, I could have taken this and put it to the other side. But let's just do it this way. So that's going to equal 1 plus the square root of x plus 1. Now you look at this, you can say, well, that doesn't really make it any easier for me. And it makes it just a little bit easier than foiling this whole thing on the left-hand side. It makes it a little bit easier, I think. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, um, let's square the whole entire left side. If I square the whole entire left side, it gets rid of that square root. But watch this. This is where you have to be careful. You have to square the whole entire right side. It's a sum, so you've got to put it in parentheses and put a square right here. Well, this part was the easy part because it just canceled out the, um, the square root, all right? Because the only thing on the left-hand side was underneath the square root. So now I just have a 2x plus 3. Now, over here, we are going to have to FOIL this. This is a little bit involved, all right? I'll say that. So what we're going to do is we're going to write it. You can't just go 1 squared plus this thing squared. A lot of people want to do that, and I've mentioned it many times. Go back in the videos and look at it. I've said that you can't do that. Make sure that when you FOIL or when you square something that has a sum in it that you do the FOIL method. All right. So you put both of them in parentheses like this. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to FOIL this thing. Now the left side, that hasn't changed so we just keep it like this now what do I do when I foil this let's go use yellow here so I'm gonna go first outside inside last so let's go the first well that's easy and then we'll do the outside then we'll do the inside and we'll do the last so I'll write all my arrows there then let's figure it out let's do the first one times one that's easy it's just one let's do the outside one times the square root of x plus one okay it's a positive because they're both positive so you put a plus that's the square root of x plus 1, because it's just 1 times that. Look at the middle one. The middle one's kind of easy, isn't it? Same thing. It's 1 times this. And you notice, when you, when you square something, square a sum like this, this is a perfect square, both of these, the outside and inside, are going to both be the exact same thing. All right. So I could add them together. It's a little bit of a trick to it. You could just put a 2 in front of it if you wanted to. But sometimes people don't see that, and I'm just going to do the whole FOIL method just to make sure you know what's going on. So let's do the, uh, let's go, we got it first, we did outside, let's do inside, which will also be square root of x plus 1, and let's do the last. Now watch this, the last comes out pretty easy because it's the square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1, right? It's a square root times a square root. What happens when you multiply the same exact thing together? What happens with the square roots? They go away, so what do you get? Just get an x plus 1, didn't you? Okay. I guess you could put that in parentheses. You don't really need to because nothing's being distributed through there. So let's see if we can add some stuff up. Let's not deal with this left side just yet. What about the right side? So let's just do the numbers. 1 plus 1. That's 2. All right. So look, I got rid of that and got rid of that. Um, what else do we have? We got a plus x, right? And then plus. Now look at this. Square root of x plus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. I'm sorry, not times. I said times. I didn't mean to. You're adding them together. So how many do you have? you got two of them, right? Square root of x plus 1. 
So the math hasn't been real hard, has it? Even on that FOIL method, that wasn't really that big of a deal, was it? The hardest thing was just, I think, adding these two together to get 2 squared of x plus 1. I think that's about the hardest thing you had to do here. And that wasn't even that hard, was it? No, that wasn't even that hard. All right, so let's keep going. Um, let's start putting some stuff on the left-hand side. See that square root right there? I want to eventually get the whole right side with just a square root over here. I think it make it a little bit easier. So what can we do? Well, we can subtract a 2 from both sides, correct? So what, let's, sorry, I know this probably doesn't make any difference to you, but I like to do my steps in a different color. So we subtract a 2 from both sides, and we'll subtract an x from both sides. And let's see what we get. All right, let's go back to blue. 2x minus x is x. 3 minus 2, that's a plus 1, equals, of course, those two canceled out. And what do you get? You get 2 square root of x plus 1. You can do this next step a couple different ways. Um, let's do it like this. Let's just square both sides right now. I'm going to th go through this kind of kind of quick. Okay, I'm not going to sit down and go through every explanation here, but I'm going to square both sides. So if I square this side, I also have to square this side right here. We've got another FOIL method, though, don't we? So you got to realize that. At this point, it'd be really nice if you did, were able to just do this in your head. But if you can't, I'll write it down. And then what do we do when we square this? Look, this is not really distributive property here because everything's being multiplied. you got a 2 times the square root. So what we're doing is we're just squaring everything inside of here. So if we square the 2, we get a 4. Watch this. If we square the square root, what happens? We're left with what? Just x plus 1. Now, be careful, though. What is that x plus 1 doing to that 4? Multiple. Right, so I put it in parentheses like that. That's a key step. Put a little star or something next to it because that's a step where a lot of people mess up right there. <coughs> okay? Let's do this. Hmm. Yeah. I was almost tempted. See how you have an x plus 1 here and an x plus 1 here? I was almost tempted to um, divide both sides by x plus 1. But you'd never want to do that. You don't want to divide by the variable you're trying to solve for. Because what you're going to do is you're going to get rid of one of your possible solutions if you do that. Did anybody think about maybe doing that here? Nobody thought about it? Maybe I shouldn't have brought it up. Okay, <laughs> But I looked at it. I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could divide by an x plus 1. Well, we're going to lose one of our solutions if we do that. So I'm not going to do that. So what would you do here? Give me one word. Foil, right? Let's foil this. Or distribute, it's fine. That's a good word too. Distribute right here. So we're going to first, outside, inside, last right here. And then right here, we'll distribute the 4. All right, showing you everything that we're doing. So let's do that. We get x squared plus 1x plus 1x. At this point, we should be able to do that in our head. That's 2x, and then plus 1 times 1 is plus 1 equals 4x plus 4. So it's a little longer problem than you're used to, but every once in a while they throw these in here. But really, the steps haven't been that difficult so far, I don't think. It looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? So let's put everything on the left-hand side and set it equal to 0. So let's uh, go to yellow again. There we go. So let's subtract a 4x from here and here. And let's subtract a 4 from here and here. The only way that you're going to be able to do this is not just by sitting there watching me do this. You've got to practice this on your own, okay? If you understand the steps and you look at it and you're like, yeah, I think I got it. It doesn't mean you got it, okay? You got to, you have to, I'm saying got it a lot, you have to um, do this thing yourself. So practice this yourself, even if you think you understand everything I just did. Look what happens here. That all canceled. We get a zero over here. Let's see what we get here. We get an x squared. 2x minus 4x is negative 2x, and this is going to be a negative 3, and that equals zero. Now, look at this. This is now a nice little quadratic. It's set equal to 0, and so we should be able to solve. you got several different methods to solve for x here. I'd say distribute's probably my best. You sure you want to say distribute? I mean, it's that's... kind of the opposite of it. What is it? I know what you're thinking, but factor. say it right. Factor, right. I would try to factor it. So let's see. Does this thing factor? Sure, it yeah. does. Negative 3 and positive 1. So they multiply to be negative 3, and they add up to be negative 2. Set them both equal to 0. And we're almost done. So x is what? 3? Oops. <laughs> I got ahead of myself right here. I'm trying to show every step. And let's get rid of this right here. Sorry about that. 
So x plus 1 equals 0 is getting ahead. And now I can write it down, x equals negative 1. So there's my two answers, negative 3, or positive 3 and negative 1. Is that the answer I read off to you? Good. Look at that. Amazing problem. Scrolls down a couple pages, doesn't it? <laughs> so we started off something like that. Now they all are not that difficult. And, you know, if you had a whole test full of those, there's no way you'd be able to do 20 problems. So just every once in a while, one or two of these are sprinkled in there. And um, there you go. Now, if I wouldn't have taken so long to, um, to explain it, it wouldn't have taken near as long to do. But learn how to do that. That's pretty important. Okay? If I went a little fast, go back on YouTube and watch it. And um, or now I forget my numbers. That <laughs> oh, there we go. So what did we just do? We just did ten, right? So twelve, thirteen, twenty-three. I gotta remember that. Twelve. I forgot it already. What did I say? Thirteen, twenty-three. My memory's horrible. I saw a commercial on TV about some, some eating some stuff that's supposed to help your memory or whatever. My wife said, "I'm gonna get that for you. You have to <laughs> eat the whole bottle because my memory's terrible." All right. I could blame it on getting old, but my memory's always been bad since I was young. I'm still kind of young, I think. Kind of. <laughs> you're probably laughing, aren't you? Mr. Hammock, you're ancient. Shoot, when I started teaching right out of college, kids thought I was so old. I was like, you know, I'm barely yeah, any older than you are. People keep telling your wife that she's a Cradle, right? That's right. They think I'm so much younger than her, but I'm really not. So I'm older. What's that? It's supposed to be a what? Five? Okay, what was I writing? You sure? Yeah, it's a five. Mine says two. Mine says five. Twelve. X squared plus six X to the one. This is number twelve. This is what I have for number twelve. Is that what not what you have? Really? Uh, we got... X squared plus... But the other one was the same squared. one? All right, my bad. Here, let me see yours. Uh, number 12 equals... Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, that's what my paper said, so we'll uh, write what your paper said. Maybe that's why the answer's different. Who knows? We'll see. Let's go do it. We'll do it real quick, and then... I got you might have gotten the that. same answer, give or take a sign. Okay. All right, that looks right, doesn't it? All right, let's give this a shot then. Um, what's our complementary color you want with this? How about orange? Does orange and pink or purple go together? That would be kind of weird. That's okay. Let's do it anyway. So let's see. We want to get rid of this one fourth power. How do you get rid of? How do you get rid of the one fourth power right here? Take it to the fourth. That's right. Take it to the fourth power. So taking this whole thing to the fourth power is going to cancel out my uh, one fourth exponent. But we've got to do the same thing to the other side. So look, taking it to the fourth power just gets rid of this, and look what we're um, look what we end up with. We just end up with x squared plus 120x equals five to the fourth. I don't know what's five. That's to... six twenty five. Six twenty five. Good. I Thanks. Know, my... Yeah, because 5 times 5 is 125, and 125 times 125, is that right? Is that right? 5 to the 4th. Oops, let's do this. Let me get my, oh, what's going on here? Cancel that. All right, why is this so dumb? <laughs> here it is. Maybe it's, is it there? Ah, there it is. I was wondering what's going on. Is it working? Clear. It's not even working now. What did I just do? What is it? 625? Okay, sorry. I should have not doubted you, Tiffany. All right, so that's what we have right there. So now what are we going to do? X squared plus 120X. Set it, uh, or put this on the left-hand side, minus 625 equals 0. Um, uh, does anything factor real nice yeah. with this? I would guess it does. It kind of looks like um, it does. Negative. I'm sorry. Positive 125 and negative 5. Okay. And then negative 5. Does that work? It worked when I did it. Yeah? Yeah, okay. Oh, what I was, what was I, what I said? I said 125 times 125. I, I meant 25 times 25. Yeah, that should work. Yeah, because remember, 
um, 5 to the 4th, right? 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is what? 25 times 5 is what? 125 times 5, and there you go. So that does multiply to be negative 625, and it adds up to be positive 125. Very good. Set them equal to 0, so x is negative 125, and x is positive 5. Is that what you got? Or did I, did I, read, did I read that off as an answer? Yeah. I did? Okay, that's weird that my answer key would have the right answer, and then my the problem sheet that I have, unless I'm looking at a wrong... Anyway, whatever. <laughs> that's what it... We got it good now. All right, that was actually kind of easy, wasn't it? That was a lot better than the other one, wasn't it? Well, at least less steps, anyway. All right, 13 was the next one, right? If I remember. And that was kind of like that, right? Doesn't have a fractional exponent. Yeah, x plus... Does yours say x plus 8 to the 2 fifths? No. Oh, let me see yours again, Tiff. I guess I better not look off of mine anymore. Number 13. x minus 10 to the 2 fifths. See, that's where I get in trouble because I make all these... Uh, Worksheets that look the same but with different values on there, you know, just to mix it up a little bit. There you go. And then I get lose track of which answer key goes with which one. All right, let's do this one. Uh, let's see. It's kind of the same deal. What I want to do is get rid of that one fifth power right there. So let's get rid of the one fifth power by taking it to the what? To the fifth. But I also have to do that to the other side as well, don't I? Everybody see that? So look what happens here. That completely cancels out. Now, this doesn't completely cancel out. What am I left with, though? A 2, but it's squared, isn't it? So it's x minus 10 squared. So let's write it a little bit neater. x minus 10, that quantity is squared. And this right here, that completely canceled out, so I'm just left with a 9x. i got to do a little foil here. I didn't have to do that in the other problem, but i got to do a little foil here. Can you foil this in your head? Let's see if we can. x squared, what do you think? x squared minus 20 minus, plus 100. How about 20x and then plus 100? Plus equals 9x. All right? Subtract 9x from both sides. So x squared minus 11x, and that, I'm sorry, minus 29x, sorry. I was thinking add. So we subtract 9x, subtract a 9x, and that's minus 29x plus 100. I don't think that that factors, uh, does it? 4 and 25? Does it really? Oh, 4 and 25, of course. <laughs> you get 29. I just saw 29 and thought it looked kind of crazy. But yeah. I think all these factor, don't they? They make this kind of nice for you. So it's going to be negative and negative, right? So 25 and 4. Yep. So if they're both negative, it multiplies to be a positive 100, and it adds up to be a negative 29. Set them both equal to 0, and there's your answer. x is 25 and x is 4. There you go. Good deal. 23 was the next one, wasn't it? Again, if I went a little too quick, if you didn't get all that, um, feel free to look at it on YouTube. 23. Let's do 23. So it's this completely different style of problem now. So we've got to change gears a little bit. Equals 5. Oh, that's the wrong one again. I'm looking at my old sheet. Tiffany, thank you. <laughs> you know the drill now, right? I might as well just run to... to you the might as well. I don't know how much I'd pay for it, but... Let me borrow. Is it less than or equal to? Is that what it says? 4x. All right, and this says just solve the inequality. So before we do anything, um, let's put everything on the left-hand side and set it equal to 0, or in this case, less than or equal to 0. So we need to subtract a 4x Wait, from both sides. Factor out the four. Mm. I don't know if we want to do that or not. I mean, it's a possibility. I mean, you got a good point. I hadn't thought about that, but let's do this. Let's subtract a 4x from both sides. So I'm going to subtract a 4x, put it over 1. Now, if I'm going to subtract fractions right here, what am I going to need to do? Find a, bell's going to ring any second, so I don't know if I'll have time to finish this up. We need to find a what? Common denominator, correct? So if I find a common denominator, it's going to be 4 minus x. I didn't do anything to this, so I'll keep that the same. Now, what did I do here? I multiplied a 1 by a 4 minus x, so I have to multiply this by a 4 minus x. And so if we distribute it through here, I'll get you started on this anyway. So it's going to be a minus 16x 
Make sure you distribute the negative through here, and then it's going to be a plus 4x squared. Do you see that? Four. It was that thing right there. It was just a distributive property. It's negative 4x on the outside, and the 4 minus x in the parentheses distribute it through, and that's what you should get. And that should be less than or equal to 0. Um, and this up here is going to be, what, 4x squared. 8x minus 16x is minus 8x over 4 minus x. And Tiffany, this might be where you want to um, factor out a 4. So yeah, you might want to factor out a 4 here just to make things a little easier for us. I don't think you really have to, but it might make things easier. So if I factor out a 4 from this, what do I get? x squared minus 2x, correct? Over 4 minus x. It's less than or equal to 0. Now, this 4 does not cancel out with this 4 because this is part of a sum down here, but I can divide both sides by 4. Divide this by 4, it goes. Divide this by 4, it's a 0. So this makes it a little bit easier. x squared minus 2x over 4 minus x is less than or equal to 0. Now, what was the, uh, what was the deal with this when you had a fraction? What would you do with this? You set them set both, both what? Equal to zero. You set them both equal to 0. All right, then you solve for x, and then what do you do? You put them both on your number line, right? So whatever you get for x here, you put here and here. You're actually going to get two answers for x here, aren't you? Just to make it a little easier for us. You didn't have to. It just, it just looks a little bit better having x squared minus 2x instead of 4x squared minus 8x. That's the only reason. So you're going to have three numbers here, you put it here, then you decide what's going to make it negative, right? So you find out where your negatives are going to be, and then that's how you find your interval notation. All right, we'll do some more tomorrow, and then we'll take the test on Thursday.